as the scripture says, because this is the will of God concerning us. And I know that tough times never last. But as a writer said, tough people do. And Daniel has also said, those who know their God, they say, was strong and do exploits. At a time like this, when things appear to be turning upside down, that is when we can stand by faith. The Bible says that when men are cast down, with the believers have the authority, the power of atony from Christ to say that they are lifting up. So for those of you who are listening and watching me all over the world, at this time, when the entire world appears to be in confusion, I prophesy unto your life and I say, there is a lifting up for you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I want to appeal to all believers, especially leaders of churches, to please be very much responsible, be compassionate, and be concerned for your members at this time. Sundays after Sunday, they have been coming to us. They have been giving out their resources to the church. The church has to pay back. We need to requite them. They are locked up. They cannot get to their businesses. Let the churches, the local churches, roll out incentives for them to care for them so that the body and the soul might be able to live together. I pray that this thing that I'm saying, which is at the center of God's heart, will be at your, the center of your heart as well. And you will do your work at the shepherd of God. Feeding the sheep, not only through the world, but through the resources that have been gathered against a time like this. This is the time. As Joseph did, he gathered during the time of plenty and he distributed to the people during the time of famine. So I want to encourage you through your social ministries in your local churches, please, those who will be finding it very difficult to find daily bread at a time like this, please make sure you reach out to them and uh, let them know that they belong to a body of Christ which is a body in Biara. May the Lord lift the siege over the entire nation in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Whatsoever the devil intends to do through this pandemic, may it not succeed in the name of Jesus Christ. And if it is the anger of God, may the Lord remember mercy in his anger and remove this plague from us in the name of Jesus. Please, I want to encourage you, obey all the rules of hygiene, social distance, uh, refraining from hugging, from, from shaking hands, etc., etc., Maintain the rule of hygiene. Wash your hands. Use your sanitizers. And I pray that no plague will come near your dwelling in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Today, I'm going to speak on the topic, conquer your fear. Conquer your fear. I read from the book of Matthew, chapter 14. I read from verse 22 to, 20, to 33. Matthew 14, 22 to 33. Conquer your fear. Immediately, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him 
to the other side. Why he sent the multitudes away? And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. Now when evening came, he was alone there. But the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the, water, by the waves, for the wind was contrary. Now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out for fear. But immediately, Jesus spoke to them, saying, Be of good cheer. It is I. Do not be afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. So he said, come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately, Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him. And said to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they had got into the boat, the wind ceased. Then those who were in the boat came and worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Conquer your fear. There is no one in the world or that has come to this world that had or had, has not had time to fear at least one time in his or her lifetime. Why? Why do we fear? Or why do people fear? We fear for so many reasons that time will not be able to permit me to enumerate. But let me say some. Fear could come because of our feeling of inadequacy to face what has happened to us or what is about to happen to us, humanly speaking. Fear can also come for a lack of preparation for what is coming, which we must do the hodu that we must cross. We can also be fearful for lack of enough resources to take the next compulsory step in our lives. The size of the problem that has confronted us at the same time, the size of the problem we are facing could be the reason for the fear. An approach of death because of a sickness or a consuming plague like the coronavirus pandemic could be another source of fear and concern. Or at times we fear because of the repercussions of the wrong steps that we have taken. Beloved, at a time like this, I know when the developed nations are cringing, they are already on their knees over one single virus. I know that people from third world developing countries like Nigeria may be consumed with fear because usually we look up there for vaccine or the medicine to take. But presently, nobody has it. But let me tell you, you have no cause to fear because the Lord God is on the throne, whatever happens. 
And he will see us through this hour. He has said, call upon me in the day of trouble. I will answer you. And I will do great and mighty things. Which you have never seen before. Beloved, when fear comes, we are never the same again. This is the reason I am adjoining somebody. Don't fear. Because fear will make you to die many times before you're dead. It can take away your sleep from you. It can cause depression if care is not taken. It can take away everything good out of your life. It may make you unenjoyable even to your, the members of your household. Fear over something we are experiencing or about to experience can make us to become aggressive. Very touchy. We will no longer be women. Our comments will be rash. We will speak in anger because of a need that is beyond our capacity to meet. We blame others when fear comes. Beloved, we need to be careful. Fear. I say fear should not be your person because fear is an agent of Satan. Fear is an agent of Satan because it has torment in it, according to the scripture. Hear what the Bible says about fear or anxiety when it comes. The Bible says, anxiety or fear in the heart of man causes depression. But a good word makes the heart glad. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 25. Beloved, fear should not be your puzzle because when fear comes, it will not allow you to see the way out of your problem. Or it will not give you room to think of alternatives. Whenever there is a problem, there is always an alternative. There is always a way of escape. Fear kills hope and also destroys faith in us if you do not take care. Beloved, harboring fear is harboring an enemy. Therefore, do away with fear because the Lord is on the throne. He rules in the affairs of men. For John 4, 18, fear. From the little we have said, as I said, is an agent of the devil. And the devil has brought it at this time because of coronavirus in order to torment many people, kill them, and allow their dreams to end all of a sudden. That will not be your portion. In the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible says, perfect love casts out fear. So I will rather enjoy you to love God the more this time around. If you love God the more, the love of God will allow you to know what God is about and will do for you at a time like this. Beloved, I use today's scripture, Matthew chapter 14, from verse 22 to 33, to underscore the importance of you standing in faith, you standing in power, you standing in hope at a time like this, because the disciples of Jesus experience a storm at a time in their lives. And it was that storm that almost took away the future of their ministry while they were 
on the sea of Galilee. Beloved, the corona pandemic that wants to destroy your life, the Lord will destroy it. In the name of Jesus Christ, anything that is causing you to fear presently, the Lord will wage war against it for you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. It will not rule over you. You will rule over it. In the name of Jesus. Businesses have been paralyzed by coronavirus. There is lockdown of everything. As I have appealed to the church, let me also appeal to the government. People cannot be locked inside for long if hunger comes. Therefore, please, and please, and please, that is the reason you are there. Whatsoever it will cost you, let there be palliative measure. For the ordinary Nigerian, ordinary, spell out how it will get to ordinary Nigerian. You are not the only government, there are other governments of the world who have responded positively to the needs of their citizens. This is where we will know that we have a compassionate government, a government that thinks about the people, a government that we can try to continue to superintend over our common way. American government quickly all the I mean all the parliaments bury their differences. The Democrats and the the Republican. They bury their differences, differences in order to make palliative measures available for the citizens. Very, very quickly and rapidly, they pass it into law that $2 trillion whooping $2 trillion be released by the government to cater for the people because of the lockdown. If people know that they will not go hungry, during the lockdown. Why should they say compulsively they must go to the market? Please, I plead with government. I plead with you. Not only telling people to go and sit at home, but let food reach them at home. It's very, very important. It's very, very important. I plead with you in the name of the Lord. Let this be done. How do we conquer fears? I want us to go back into that passage and see the way the disciples of Jesus Christ being tossed to and fro by the storm conquered the fear in their lives when the storm came suddenly. Number one, we will conquer any fear including the fear of Corona for us if we can remember that God's purpose for your, our being must be fulfilled. Your life is purpose dreaming. God created you for a purpose. He created you to fulfill a purpose. And when you have not fulfilled that purpose, you are not going anywhere. No pandemic, no epidemics, no disease, no infirmity is going to consume your life in the name of Jesus. Some people were accusing me, especially the people in the news media, those who have only one eye, only one eye, they forgot that we, prophets, have two eyes. We have the physical eye and we have the spiritual eyes. That's why we, we that's the reason we have foresight. That's why we prophesy. That's why we have foreknowledge. That's why we tell people to, to run away from what can manifest in the physical and appear ordinarily, ordinarily physical but as spiritual connection. They were accusing me for saying in, the, in my last sermon that pandemic, this pandemic came because of sin of man. Arrogance of man. I repeat it and I repeat it again and again. You can, even if this pandemic goes away, if you refuse to turn to God, God had the power to visit the world with another. He had done that before in human history. When the serpent was biting the children of Israel, and somebody with only one eye 
the physical eye alone. We've been thinking of whether they are they had bush around, where the, 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 the reptiles were handy, or any other physical reason why that one came about. And was it because we were dirty? They were dirty in China. Were they more dirty in China than the rest of the world that the the the, 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 the pandemic, the coronavirus started there? No. China is a nation that does not identify God as God. It's not a religious nation. Even if they are struggling to overcome it now, why should the anger of God broke out from there? Is that the bed that China can, uh, can export to the rest of the world? And we are calling your attention to the need for man to adjust his way. Let us adjust our ways. Turn to God, recognize him as the Lord over all things. He says it's natural. And you are in, it's natural to you because you are a natural man. You don't know, you don't know beyond what is natural. But I that is speaking to you, I am a tripartite being. I am spirit, soul, and body. I'm not only natural like you. I am a spirit and I have a soul. So I my my, my spirit is linked with that of that of that of God. And I can know beyond my immediate environment. And I can tell you that if you do not repent from your sins, you will perish. Without any apology to anyone. Beloved, you are created for a purpose. And if you are a child of God, God is going to fulfill his purpose over your life whether there is coronavirus or not in the name of Jesus. But I think you know that that does not mean that you should violate the law of hygiene. The law of hygiene is there, but the law of hygiene alone is not sufficient. You need to know who the Lord is and also walk with him so that he might be well with you all the days of your life. In second. Timothy chapter 1 verse 12, the Bible says, for the reason, I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and I'm persuaded that he is able to keep what I have committed to him until that day. Amen. Because Paul knew that he was created for a purpose. And whatsoever was happening to him, to him, the suffering he was passing through, he knew will not be consumed because he must fulfill his life purpose. I know whom I have believed. Do you know him you have believed? If you know the one you have believed, you will not fear. Because he is able. Hallelujah. Somebody to say he is able. So keep what I have committed to him until that day. In the book of Philippians chapter 1, verse 6, the Bible says again, being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. You are created for a purpose. And that purpose no Jupiter and twat. It must come to pass. It must be fulfilled in the name of Jesus Christ. Also in Genesis chapter 28, verse 15, the Bible says, Behold, I am with you. Hello. Who was talking there? God himself. Behold, I am with you. Somebody said, Behold, God is with me. The Lord told the children of Israel when they were afraid, they didn't want to go forward and possess the land of promise because of the way. The Lord said, Behold, I am with you, and we keep you wherever you go. I will bring you back to this land. And I will not leave you until I have done 
what I have spoken to you. That was the word of God to Jacob. And the Lord fulfilled every bit of it. The Lord that fulfilled this word in the life of Jacob will fulfill it in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Number two, why you should not fear? The way not to fear is an assurance that the Lord is near. Hello? The Lord is near all the time. When the storm came raging, the, the disciples of Jesus were afraid. They forgot that the Lord was near. They thought that the Lord was far away where he was praying. And he was oblivious of what they were passing through. That he didn't know. God is not man. He cannot be limited. You cannot talk about his ability in terms of the ability of man. Hello? We fear because we think of the God we serve. As if our God is man. He's not man. He is God. He is God. If you look at that passage again, especially verse 25, the Bible says, Now in the fourth watch of the night, when that storm was raging, Jesus went to them. Hallelujah. Why was it at the exact time? When the storm was really bombarding and shaking their confidence. That was when Jesus went to them. Hallelujah. He went to them at the time they were losing their sleep. He was walking on the sea. Why didn't Jesus say, Oh, don't be afraid, I'm here. Why would Jesus choose to walk on the sea in the, instead of speaking to them. You know that when we were saying there was storm, it was the water of the sea that was being disturbed. It was the same water Jesus was walking on. Jesus wanted them to know that the storm is under his feet. The raging water is under his feet. So he wanted to them to know practically that I am in charge of this situation. I am in control. Doesn't the Bible says, say that the Lord himself rides upon the wave as horse? The wave is the horse of the Lord. At times when, when tongue comes, when I'm flying, and there is boop, 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 boop. I rest in the Lord. I say, Father, thank you for demonstrating your might here again. You are riding in this wind. I know you are there. I worship you. I worship your majesty. To God be all the glory. You are telling me that you are here. I know you are here. I worship your majesty. I continue. I continue. I continue. Recently, not too long ago, that was uh, in February, when I was in the U.S., uh, then there was a storm going from Washington to Atlanta. You know, it's in Atlanta, you carry the plane back to Nigeria. Very short journey. But that day was almost a black day. There was terrible storm. For about one hour, we were at the tarmac. The plane was not able to fly. And after the the plane flew. Then we were not able to land again. Because everything was dark. We couldn't see the ground. The, the journey that was supposed to last less than one and a half hours took us time. But in the end, we landed safely. I will continue to tell the story of how God has allowed me to overcome the storm of my life. I know that will be your portion as well. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Beloved, at that watch or at that time, 
particular time when some was shaking them, shaking their confidence and bringing fear. The Lord was walking towards them. Do you ever see the Lord at such a time walking towards you? Even if you don't see him, he is there. He is there. You are not alone. In all your journeys, Jesus will lead you. In the book of 2 Kings chapter 6, you can read that later from verse 15 to 17. It was the story of Elisha and his servant together with the Syrian army that came to destroy Elisha because Elisha was telling the king of Israel what the king of Syria wanted to do. And the king of Syria commanded the head of his army to go and get Elisha the prophet for leaking his secret. And the army came. The, the boy that was with, with, with Elisha only could see physically only one eye. When you can only see things from the physical, you have only one eye. You have problem. You have problem. Because you will never, never, never be able to find lasting solution to anything that is beyond the physical in your life. But you are not only physical. You may deny your spiritual existence, but you are also spirit. That is where the reason when the spirit the gets out of man, man becomes dead. The spirit is part of God that is in us. Hello? So, that my young man with Elisha could only see in the physical. When he saw the army, he was afraid. But Elisha saw beyond that. Though physically there was no army with Elijah, but legions of angels who were ready to fight, they were already there, standing for Elisha. And the Lord, Elisha only prayed, Lord, open the eyes of this young man, that he might know that those who are with us are more than those with them. And the eyes of the young man opened, and he saw the heavenly host, already waiting at the command of Elisha to strike the Syrian army. Hallelujah. God is near and you do not know. May your eyes be open to his nearness more than coronavirus at a time like this in the name of Jesus. Let me repeat it again. Psalm 23 verse 4. The Bible says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. Why? Because you are with me. Hallelujah. Let somebody say you are with me. Say you are with me. Say again that you are with me. Even if you are already infected, the Lord is with you and you will recover. In the name of Jesus. Psalm 46, verses 1 to 3 says, God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Hallelujah. Who is that person that will not fear? That the one that knows that God is his refuge at this time like this. At a time like this, the, ma, the one who knows that God is his strength. He, and that God is a present hand in the time of trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Even though the heart be moved. Is the heart not being moved now? The heart is being moved. And though the mountain be carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters roar and, and be troubled, though the mountain shake with its swelling, sailor, we will not fear. Psalm Isaiah 41 verse 10 says, Fear not. Hello? Fear not, for I am with you. Be not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yea, I will help you. I will uphold you with my right hand of righteousness. Hallelujah. And finally in that passage, the Bible says in Isaiah 43, 1 to 2, But now thus says the Lord, who created you, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by my name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. 
When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. I think somebody will say amen to that. These are the promises of God. They will not fail over your life if you believe in Jesus' name. Number three, you will not fear because you will open your ears of faith and you will hear God speak to you at a time like this. And what will the Lord say? And what is the Lord saying? Fear not. When the storm like this comes and many of pleasant things are happening around you, it is more likely for you to hear the negative reports from the news media than the positive. Do you know when you are hearing of negative re reports, you are hearing of the devastation that coronavirus and other things are doing? The number of people that have been infected, the number of people that have died. If that is the news you want to hear, then the one that will be speaking to you is coronavirus. But if you will switch off from that and open your ears of faith, you will be hearing the Lord speak to you. Fear not, you will survive it. Fear not, it will not consume you. When it was a time of great fear for the disciples, on the sea, and they saw Jesus coming, they thought that it was an, a multiplication of their problem. Hello? They thought it was a multiplication of their problem. And they were more afraid. Jesus said, fear not. It is I. Do not be afraid. No other person can tell you it is I. Nobody can tell you fear not. You will not hear fear not from news media. They will not. Because they are limited by what they see. They only see in the physical. They don't see in the spiritual. Hello. The Lord God will want your eyes of understanding to be opened. I will speak more about your faith. Number four is the activation of your faith. At a time like this, if you can activate your faith, you will not fear. Faith is the opposite of fear. Fear is false evidence appearing real. Faith is a winner all the time. As I said before, faith is the reality that will take you to where you are going safely. Is that very cool? Is that aircraft that you will enter and will take you to where you are going safely? It is faith. It is not fear. Beloved, when Peter, I mean, Peter had that, it was the law. Peter said, if it were you and you don't want me to fear again, tell me to come to you. Hallelujah. Tell me to do what? To come to you. And Peter, the Lord said, come. And when Peter heard that, Peter started, he left the, the, the ship. What was his fear? He stepped into it. Hallelujah. He stepped over his fear for the first time. That is dominion. God wants you to have dominion. You will step over your fear this day. As from today, you will step over your fear. Your fear will not rule you. Your fear will not dominate you. The, your fear will not determine your future. In the name of Jesus. So, Peter stepped out. And what was Peter doing? Peter started walking over what he feared. You will walk over coronavirus. Successfully, you will not be a casualty. In the name of Jesus. He started walking. Started walking. Started walking over his fear. That was how, how he activated his faith. 
there is a faith you need to ignite as you set fire on your gas cooker. That gas cooker has the potential to catch fire, to bring fire out. But you have to ignite it. You have to ignite, ignite the fire of your faith and let it produce something miraculous for you at a time like this. Beloved, if you can focus on Jesus, the I am that I am, you are going to conquer your fear. Your, con your fear will not conquer you. You don't need to go and commit suicide for whatever you are facing. Because there is a way out in Jesus Christ to your faith. Number five, trust him to do what he promised to do. He has promised to save you. Will you trust him? Trust and obey. For there is no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Trust him. Trust him. Trust him. Another thing that made Peter to walk on the water was the trust he had in the one that said, Come. He had trust in the one that said, Come. And he made up his mind that he was going to go to him. Trust in the Lord that this coronavirus has not come for you. It has not come for your life. In the name of Jesus. I have the belief that God has never promised that he will destroy our world with sickness. It is by fire that he will destroy the world. So if there is going to be one person that will survive the coronavirus, I believe I and my household we will survive it in the name of Jesus Christ. So you have trust in him. Do you know the, the trust you have in somebody is the, real, the level of reliability that you will have in that person or what the people in statistics call confidentiality. You have that confidence that it will not fail you. He will not disappoint you. So if you can trust him that says that no evil will be for you as, as is recorded in Psalm 91. Neither shall any pestilence come near your dwelling. If you can trust him for that, you will experience it in the name of Jesus Christ. Trust him to step out of fear into faith. Trust him to start out of your failure in life to success. It is by trust in him alone. Number six, call upon him when the goings are tough. When the fear is almost consuming you, call upon him. The disciples call upon the law. They say, Lord, save us. We are perishing. Hallelujah. And what did the Lord do? He rebuked the wind. And there was a calm. The name of Jesus is a beautiful name. It's a wonderful name. It's a fear coming name. It's a name that overcomes always. In the book of Joel chapter 2 verse 32 and Romans 10 13 the Bible says and it's I come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved whoever whether man or woman whether black or white or red or yellow whoever you may be that shall call upon the name of the Lord whether you are short like me or you are tall if you can call upon the name of the Lord, you will be saved. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem, there shall be deliverance. As the Lord has said, among the remnant of whom the Lord calls. And finally, remember, 
to worship him always. Through worship of him, you will overcome. Hello? Through the worship of him, his majesty, his power, his faithfulness, his truth, his righteousness. If you can worship him, you will overcome. At this time of lockdown, provision will come for you. Health will come for you. In the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible says when they saw him, they worshipped him. If you worship him, why will he not also be blessing you? He honors those who honor him. He honors those who honor him. I want you to set altar for the Lord always on daily basis. That the Lord cannot resist. He loves those who will set altar for him. Altar of prayer. Altar of worship. Worship the beauty of his holiness. Set him apart in your heart. Let there be no other idol. Let him continue to be God. To reign and to rule. And you will conquer your fear. You will master your fear. Your fear will not conquer you. It will not master you. Neither will your fear have dominion over you. You will walk over the water of your life. You will walk successfully over coronavirus. You will not die. You will not die. You will live. And you will proclaim the goodness of the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. And when the battle is over, we shall wear the crown. We shall wear the crown. We shall wear the crown. Oh, when the battle's over, we shall wear the crown. Oh, we shall wear the crown. Ah, when the battle is over, we shall wear the crown. We shall wear the crown. We shall wear the crown. When the battle is over. We shall wear the crown. Oh, we shall wear the crown. Eternal Father, all that have listened to me and believe your word, this that our fear, grant them power to overcome. Grant them the power to conquer. Let them not be conquered. See us through. That your name continuously and continually through us might be glorified. Thank you, eternal God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Fellow Nigerians, I want to bring this word of encouragement to you all. Over the coronavirus pandemic that is ravaging the entire world. You should not let your heart be troubled because he that keeps history will never sleep nor slumber. This is part of the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. When the disciples asked them about what will be the signs of the close of the age and the end of the world and the second coming. He said in Matthew chapter 24, if you read it down from verse 6, verse 7, he told them that there will be pestilences in diverse places. There will be earthquakes. There will be false prophets. And all these things are already happening. At the time it was Ebola. Now it is coronavirus. The words of the Lord must come to pass. But my problem with our world is that while we can study the weather and know whether it's going to rain or be sunny, 
we cannot study the coming of the Son of Man, our Lord Jesus Christ. The signs of the second coming are appearing, and this is one of it. This pestilence. This pestilence is a sign to unbelievers and to believers to be more prepared because the law can soon appear. Let not your heart be troubled. John 14, from verse 1 to 3, the Lord said, Believe in God and also believe in me. In my father's house, there are so many mansions. If it were not so, I would not have told you. I'm coming to prepare a place. I'm going to prepare a place for you. And after I've done that, I will come back again to take you to myself. He's coming back again. He is coming back again. And this is one of the signs. It is time for us to turn away from sin and ungodliness and turn to God. It is time to drop arguments and stop creating religions for ourselves. It is not by religion that you are saved. It is by faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. It is time for us to put our faith in Jesus Christ. I'm assuring you as many of you that we trust him. His blood is efficacious. His blood is powerful. When the children of Israel put the blood of the Lamb in front of their houses in the land of Egypt, when the destroyer was going about, he speared their houses. Therefore, as many of you we trust in the blood of Jesus, as many of you that believe in, put the blood over you and I sprinkle the blood over you. No plague shall come near your dwelling. You will not be consumed in the ravaging power of this coronavirus. You will survive it. You will overcome it. You will subdue it. If you are sick, you will recover. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. It is well with you. Because you are a child of covenant. The Lord says, I mean, the Bible says in Isaiah 53, verse 5, that the chastisement of our peace was upon him. By his stripes we are healed. Our healing is already settled on the cross of Calvary. When the children of Israel were beaten because of their sin in Numbers 21, and the Lord told Moses to make a serpent and hang it on the tree. And that as many that were beaten and looked upon him will be healed. And as they looked, they were healed. They were saved, they were not killed. So Jesus has been lifted up for us. John 3, 14 says, As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so the Son of Man has been lifted up. As many of you that are sick will look unto Jesus, We call him to your life, We believe his blood. You will be spared. You will not die. You will live. You will declare the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. It is well with you. It is well with Nigeria. I pray for the entire world that God will show us mercy. God will be merciful. And this plague will be removed. His peace and tranquility will return in the mighty name of Jesus. Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, your Savior. And He shall be well with you. He shall be well with you. He shall be well with you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord.